In this video, we're going to cover some points on Blender's physics engine, Bullet, and how it's integrated into the game engine. Let's open up the physics panel in the properties window. Make sure to switch over to Blender Game. This makes the physics panel change dramatically from Blender Render. First, we're going to discuss the various physics types that can be assigned to an object. There's quite a few of them, but we're only going to cover the most used. The first type is static, which is the default for all objects. Static objects will calculate collisions with other objects, but they can't be pushed around by them. They also aren't affected by gravity. Static objects are best for environment elements such as floors, walls, terrain, or anything else in your scene that isn't supposed to move. The next type is dynamic. This allows the object to fall, but its rotation won't be affected by collisions. Dynamic is best for player-controlled characters, such as for a platformer or first-person shooter, when the character's rotation is controlled by the player. The next type is rigid body. A rigid body will be affected by gravity, translational motion, and rotational motion. This is best for falling objects or environment props that can be moved or pushed around. Another important type to note is the no collision type. As its name implies, it won't physically collide with other objects and will pass right through them. If you have objects in your game that are far out of the player's reach, or just act as background props, it's best to set them to no collision in order to free up memory. Let's take a look at some of the other settings in the physics panel, specifically the collision bounds option. It generates a separate mesh to calculate collisions for an object, which is called a collision mesh. By enabling this, it helps make your collisions more accurate. You can select the shape of the bounds and also define a margin. Most of the options available for the shape are self-explanatory. For example, box will draw a box-shaped object around your mesh, and sphere will generate a sphere around your mesh. However, there are two options that need more of an explanation, convex hull and triangle mesh. Selecting triangle mesh will essentially duplicate the mesh of the object and use it as the collision mesh. It will split up any quads and convert them into tries, thus the name triangle mesh. This is the most accurate, but it takes up a lot of memory, and isn't necessary in most cases. The other type is convex hull. This works similarly to triangle mesh, but it will cover any indents or holes. In this example, we have a bucket that needs to collect and hold other objects. By selecting convex hull for the bucket, it ignores the hull and acts as a solid cube. In this case, triangle mesh is needed to let the objects fall in. One last feature is the ability to visualize collisions. Go up to Game and select Show Physics Visualization. This can help you to visualize the shape of any generated collision mesh. So that's a simple introduction to the physics system in Blender. Make sure to check out the Blender Wiki and other resources to learn about other options that the physics system holds.